Hi, this is Margaret Bird, and welcome to Color Quest, and welcome to my back porch. I am sitting out here just enjoying the natural beauty of the red rose. It is not a flower that I normally have, but we just had Valentine's Day here, and I happened to get a bouquet. And I thought, now that it's fading, what a perfect way to try yet another form of dye technique, and that is immersion dyeing. So like last week where we did silk and the tulip petals, I'm going to try it with red rose petals, but this time, instead of using steam, we're gonna look at how to put it into the dye pot as an immersion and use cotton, which sometimes can be more difficult to do a transfer with natural colors. Red rose is known as being a very vibrant color to transfer, and although I don't anticipate getting strong echo prints, I am looking forward to transferring some of this beautiful red color onto some cotton wall hangings that I have that I was just playing around with. So, why don't you join me now in my kitchen studio and we'll step through the process of using the red rose in order to test out some immersion dye techniques with petals and actually some leaves. So if you have some flowers that you received for the holiday, why don't you try playing with them in your dye practice before putting them in the compost pile. It'll be one more step to enjoy the beauty of natural color.
Exploration and experimentation are so important in a dye practice and in any creative practice really. And what this immersion technique taught me was a multitude of things. One is that rose can produce a very vibrant color on its own as a single petal against a cotton substrate. And that using a glass jar actually had two purposes. One is that it conducts heat, but the other is that it allowed for the material to sink below the water surface, which is actually can be tricky. And the reason why I put the second piece on was to try to limit the printing that would happen from one side of the cotton piece to the other side. Now you can get a great mirror image that way. There's not a lot of control, at least in what I did today, but it can limit that. It can also provide a secondary transfer onto that top piece. So it acts as a barrier, but also you'll get a ghost print. And in this instance, we got a ghost color transfer as opposed to a strong print. However, the technique ended up looking probably more like a tie-dye technique. And because I put it on top of some cotton that I'd already dip-dyed in an ombre fashion, my hope had been to just play with the different colors. And that's exactly what I got. I think my favorite part of the result here was actually the interaction of the rose dye with the string. And it did give me some really beautiful and vivid dark patterns. So experiment, always worth trying something new and different. I'm sure sometime later in Color Quest, I'll look a little bit more deeply at echo printing. There's so much out there, so many different techniques around echo printing that get incredible results. So that will be something for the future. It's not something I normally do in my own practice. Now, next time on Color Quest, since we had the leftover rose water, I'm going to go ahead and create a bath, a simple dye bath with the rose. So join me next time as we look further at the rose petal, but this time as a traditional dye bath. Thank you so much for being here. Please subscribe if you're enjoying the content that you see here and know that every Friday I release new videos about the wonderful and amazing world of natural color.